Okay, my continuing series on Python for physics faculty, physics educators, physics students, all of you combined together, let's all just use Python. The idea of this series is to help you uh, use some basic Python in your introductory courses, but it could go well beyond that. Uh, so where, where do you start? And that's what I'm wanting. And in, in, the last, um, in the last couple of examples, I did a moment of inertia, finding the moment of inertia for a rod, and I integrated and I showed how to do a numerical integral. And I also showed a Monte Carlo calculation, and we're going to get back to that in a second. But I want to show something else, another important way to find the moment of inertia of a rod. So if I have a rod of length L and a mass M, uh, and I rotate about this endpoint over here, it's going to have a moment of inertia of one-third ML squared. Just a reminder, the moment of inertia is a property uh, of an object that depends on its mass distribution and the angular momentum. It's dealt with the angular momentum principle. But I'm not I'm not trying to teach physics. I'm trying to show you the Python. Okay, so if you're not sure, if you're not familiar with the moment of inertia, you can skip this one. Um, you could go look at it. I can make another video. But uh, anyway, if I take that same rod and I rotate about the center, it's going to have a different moment of inertia, one half ml squared. And so what I want to do is set up uh, these calculations in Python, uh, and so that we can get, we can put that point rotation point anywhere. Okay. So here's how we're going to do that. Suppose I have a rod, and let's just put, um, let's just say that this is the origin right there, and this is the x-axis. The first thing I'm going to do is break it into n pieces. So let's say if it has uh, n pieces, where n is let's say uh, like there. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. n equals 4. I'm going to do more than that, but let's start some, somewhere easy. In that case, what's the, uh, the size of each of these pieces? Well, I could say dl would be l over n. Each one of these pieces is 1 fourth of the total length. That makes sense. And if I represent these as individual masses, then each of them would have an individual. I'm going to treat these as point masses, so I can use the following definition for the moment of inertia. The moment of inertia is the sum of a bunch of masses, which each of their masses times their distance to the point of rotation squared, and then add them all up. So I, I need to know where these points are, and I need to know the distance to the, uh, the point of rotation, and I need to find the mass. So the mass of each of these pieces, I'll call that dm. dm would be m over n. Okay, now that's easy. But where are these pieces going to be? So let's say this is at uh, x equals 0. Where is this first piece going to be? Well, this length is dl. So how far is it from over here? This piece is going to be at uh, x, let's call that x1. It's going to be equal to uh, dl over 2. And then if it's, a, if it's a vector, I could say r1, which I'm going to go ahead and do, is going to be dl over 2. 0, 0. That's the vector location of that piece. Now, where's the next piece? The next piece is easy to find. I just need to move over. It's going to be R2. It's going to be R1 plus uh, the vector DL, 0, 0. So if I add a vector DL in the x direction, I end up there. And I can just keep on doing that and get four pieces. Now, once I have that, after that, I can pick my point. Let's call this RO equals the vector 0, 0, 0, but I can move that around. So this is my point O. After I have all the locations of these, I can find the vector from that point to those locations. In this case, yes, it is the vector location, but let's just write it out formally. So let's say Ri, uh, I guess I should, well, I, uh, let's call this Rp1, Rp2 for the piece. Ri is going to be the final position, which is going to be Rpi minus r o that's the vector from here to there it's the vector from here to there okay then once i do that i can find the magnitude of that r i magnitude and then i can plug that in up there so what i can do is i can i'm going to start off with a moment of inertia of i equals zero i'm going to break this into n pieces and then i'm going to add m times r squared for each one of these pieces and get the moment of inertia and then we can compare it to what we expect. And then we can see what happens if I break this into more pieces. After that, I'm going to move my center right here, my point O right there. All I have to do is move this to RO equals, that's a vector, 0, L over 2, no, L over 2, 0, 0. And then I can redo it. 
and then I should get these two formulas. And then wait, wait for it. What if I rotate it about a point over here? Well, the procedure is the same. It doesn't matter where that point O is. It's the same procedure, and that's what's nice about this method. So let's start off. I'm actually going to break into four pieces. I'm going to draw this in GlowScript so you can see what it looks like, and then we'll calculate everything. So let's just jump over here to Python. Come on with me. Come on. We're doing going to Python. Come on. There we are. Okay. So let's get started. Now, one of the things we're doing in numerical calculations is using numbers. So I have to have some numbers. So let's get uh, m equals, I'm thinking of a rod. It's, it's that long, and it weighs, I don't know, 60 grams. I just picked that number. Just boom, came out of my head, just like that. So m equals 0 0.06. Uh, I need a length. I said it was that long. Let's see, so that's what, 15 centimeters? 0 0.15. Okay, now I need to pick n equals 4. I already said that. Let's go ahead and draw all these points. So the first thing I can say, what is dl? dl is going to be l divided equals equals l divided by n. Is this big enough for you? There. How about that? l over n. I need the mass. dm equals m over n. Uh, now I need to find that first piece. I'm going to call that r start. r start is going to be equal to the vector. I already said it. It was uh, dl over 2, 0, 0. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. n equals 0. While n is less than n, print n. n equals n plus 1. I'm just going to show you how to move through these things. So I'm going to, I want to count, right? I want to count. There's more than one way to do this, and I like to do it the sloppy way that makes most sense. So here I have four pieces. The first one's at 0, next one's at 1, next one's at 2, next one's at 3. So um, here's what I'm going to do to make my pieces. Let's actually make this, let's just draw the spheres and then I'll add them to a list, which, have I talked about lists? I think I have talked about lists. Okay, let's see, so I'm just gonna draw the spheres. I'm just gonna make these spheres. Watch this, sphere uh, position equals uh, r start plus n times vector dl zero zero. So if, if the first n is zero, then I'm going to multiply that vector by zero and add it to my R start. So I end up at the start position. The next one in is going to be one. So I'm going to add DL. The next one, I'm going to add two of them and so forth. Uh, and that's my position. Now, what about the size, the radius? Let's put that at um, L divided by, I'm just trying to pick up a good value here. Uh, L divided by 10. I don't know. Uh, okay, so that's that. And then I do need to go over here and say n, why did I delete that, n plus 1. So it's going to increase up to 4. And let's just see what it looks like. We don't really need to draw this, but I just want to draw it the first time. There. Okay, so there's my uh, four masses. One, two, three, four. Uh, everything should be good. But I actually don't need to draw it. Okay, I'm not going to draw it. So let's not draw it. Let's just, let's just find it. So instead of this, I'm going to say... Uh, masses, mass, let's call it mass, equals a list. It's going to be a list. Um, yeah, I think that'll work. So now when, instead of this, I'm going to actually uh, calculate that as rp equals r start plus n times vector dl0, 0. Because that's that same position. I'm not going to draw it, so I don't even need this thing in here. Let's just delete that. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is say mass, let's see, let's call it RPs, RPs, it's a list, RPs equals RPs plus RP. And then I'm going to print that out just so you can see what it looks like. Print RPs. So here I have a list with my one, two, three, four vector locations of uh, each thing. And you'll notice that this one doesn't go all the way up to 0.15 because it's in the center of that piece. Okay. Uh, now, what if I make in, well, let's, let's change it in a little bit. So now I have my list. I can go through and I can calculate the moment of inertia. The first thing I want to do is to calculate my RO. So let's say RO equals the vector 0, 0, 0. 
Now we can do some fun, awesome stuff. So let's do this. For uh, RT, for temporary R, in RPS, print RT. I'm just showing you how this works. So this is a great way if you have a list and you don't need to, to actually know the item number or compare it to another list, I can just go through each item in the list, call it RT, and print it. So it's going to print out those same numbers, but just uh, one at a time. So I don't need an indice or something like that. So that's that's just a very useful tool in Python to do. Okay, so I need up here, I need to say i equals zero. Now for each of those RTs, I need to, to find m RT squared and then add it to i. So I'm going to say i equals i plus dm times RT, no, mag RT. RT is a vector, so I got to take the magnitude first, squared. So that's going to d mrt squared is the moment of inertia of that individual piece. I'm going to add it to my total moment of inertia, and then that's it. I'm done. Okay, so let's just print that out. Print i equals i, and it would have units of, let's see, it's kilogram meter squared. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, now let's print the theoretical too. i theory is going to be equal to one third, so one divided by three, times m times l squared. And let's print that. Print i theory, i theory, same units, kilogram meters squared. Okay, let's run. I never saved this. Numerical moment of inertia. Save. And I'm going to give you the code down below. Okay. So you see here, it's actually a pretty good value. I got 4.4 for my breaking into just four pieces. And then I got 4.5 times 10 the negative fourth for theoretical version. Now, what if I change this to n equals 40? There's no difference in terms of process. It's the same process. And you'll see that I get almost exactly the same thing. But I don't, I don't have to stop at 40. I could do uh, 200. And I get pretty much the same thing. Okay, now let's move that point to the middle. Okay, so if I move RO uh, to L over two, right there, and then uh, that's all I have to do over here. The only thing here I need to change the theoretical calculation it should be one divided by 12. Uh, and I'm still at 200 points. And I get something different. That's weird. Oh, you know what? I I went through. I never calculated. I never calculated uh, R. I just use RT. So let's do this. Uh, R. I can just call it R. R equals R O minus. No, it's R T minus R O. Yeah, that was it. Now it worked before because I did. I would. Uh, R O was the, the zero vector. It still doesn't work. Oh, I now need to change this to R, not RT. Bam. There you go. Okay. Now, I did tell you what if it's not even in the rod. I can do that. Uh, so let's move over here. Let's move my point to uh, L over 2, L over 2. So I'm going to just change this to L over 2, L over 2. And run it. And I'll get something different, um, actually very close to the other version, which is kind of strange. But I can put that wherever I want, right? Okay, I'm going to do one more moment of inertia calculation. And this is going to be using the Monte Carlo with random numbers. And I'm going to do the, uh, the moment of inertia of a thin spherical shell. Because why not? It's going to be fun. Uh, but if you like this, uh, this is a, a series of videos. All my playlist is down below. The code for this is down below. So you can take it. You can run with it. Uh, if, you have, if you get stuck, ask me a question, and I'll talk to you later.